everyone knows Doom is cool. True, I somewhat doubted this until, on the eve of the release of Doom Eternal, the first two parts did not go through in one gulp. With their help, I not only became convinced of the veracity of this belief, but also realized that there is Doom and there is everything else. The 1993 shooter is still ready to wipe its nose for most of the genre, including even Serious Sam, Painkiller and Dusk. After Doom 2, only Doom 2016 was just as cool and driving. Before its release, people still doubted that it would be cool, after all, in the first 16 years of the 21st century, Daho Software managed not to release a single good game. But by the time Doom Eternal was released, there was no longer any skepticism. Doom 2016 is the best shooter of the last decade, and its successor promised to keep all the advantages of the original. On this, frankly, you can end the review, Doom Eternal is exactly what the sequel to Doom 2016 was supposed to be. If you love the last part, but did not dare to pre-order a sequel, then feel free to run to do it. And if for some reason you are not yet familiar with the original, which is very similar to Eternal, then here is a short description of how it works. You enter the arena, spacious and multi-story. A dozen demons are already waiting for you on it, and about 20 more will join in the process. Mick Gordon's thumping music starts to play and you look around the room. Those soldiers with shotguns and imps throwing fireballs are not just mobs, they are walking first aid kits. They are stunned with one or two shots, and then they can be torn apart with bare hands, gaining health for finishing off. A giant baron of hell rushes to meet you, but he is dangerous only close, so let him chase you to the last, on your side are double jumps, jumps and portals. But the flying cacodmen and revenants attack from afar, so they will spoil your life without stopping, it is logical that, on the contrary, they must be sewn on first. Once you prioritize, you rush forward, pouring heavy fire on your enemies without a single recharge. The whole essence of the dooms is in movement. There are no nooks and crannies for respite, if you hesitate, you will be immediately surrounded. You are both a hunter and a victim at the same time, in one second you run from opponents as fast as you can, and in another you rush to the nearest stunned one in order to tear him to pieces. During finishing moves, the hero is invulnerable, so this is the most convenient way to catch your breath quickly and, most importantly, to replenish your ape level. This is how the new dooms differ from other shooters. Modern fighters offer to sit in a shelter until health is restored, while classic ones allocate a limited number of first aid kits per level. Here, there are practically no shelters, and it is not necessary to rely on objects lying in the arena. As long as there is at least one enemy in front of you, which you can quickly stun and break apart, death does not threaten you. The same is with the ammunition, there is no need to painstakingly collect the cartridges scattered in the corners, you cut the demons with a chainsaw, and charges for all types of weapons pour out of them like a fountain. To replenish reserves, you do not need to slow down for a second if at least one enemy is still alive. As the Doom Eternal opening cut scheme says, tear and shred until you run out. Eternal faced a daunting task, to keep the crazy drive of the original and somehow multiply it. First of all, this was done by expanding the list of skills of the protagonist. Now you can switch between regular and freezing grenades, and also spray demons with a jet from a flamethrower to receive bonuses to armor. Mobility has increased thanks to the dash, which can be done twice, with a cooldown of a couple of seconds, either on the ground or in the air. Finally, finishing moves charge a powerful bloody blow, turning even and stun small imps into bloody dust. Also, in Doom Eternal, demons have personal vulnerabilities. In the last part it was absolutely all the same from what to crumble devils, all means were good. In Eternal, the knights and barons are much easier to stop with a machine gun, ballista inflicts more damage on flying monsters, and ordinary soldiers are instantly stunned with a shotgun. Moreover, many enemies have vulnerable points for aimed fire, Arachnatron and Mancubus can be demolished with guns to deprive them of their combat power, and drones die with one headshot, generously scattering health and ammunition around. Nimble demons are prescribed cryogrenades for quick death, and armored ones are crumbled from the blood blow. 
If you try to knock everyone out of one gun out of habit, then you won't be able to maintain an even pace. This is how Doom Eternal forces you to keep in mind all the new skills and features of the arsenal. Together with the hero, the demons were pumped. Rather, there are more of them, and many beginners are able to give you the heat. Some teleport, others shoot without stopping, others strengthen and revive their congeners. At the same time, in terms of expanding the bestiary, Doom Eternal skillfully bypassed all the puddles that Doom 2 had once plunged into, there are no enraging machine gunners here, the elementals do not litter the entire space around them with lost souls, Arkvili is not forced to seek the nearest shelter in panic. Classic opponents in Eternal are much better than they were before. But not all monsters are equally good, two newcomers want to scold only. Due to the tentacles crawling out of the holes in the ground, the player begins to move forward slowly and carefully, and this, as you understand, is not at all about doom. And the marauder literally forces you to dance to his tune, he always blocks your attacks, except for the moment when he attacks himself, but only from an average distance. He forces him to concentrate all his attention on himself, to wait for the second when his eyes finally flash green, signaling that he has opened. Such a parrying mechanic with clear timings is great for some Dark Souls, but certainly not for Doom, where you are not alone with the enemy, but at the same time run away from half a dozen devils. As in the previous part, in Doom Eternal there are also peaceful moments, interruptions between arenas with action. They are filled with either plot inserts or platform segments, which have also expanded significantly in Eternal. Due to the fact that a double dash has been added to the double jump, the hero can jump huge distances. This freedom inspires at first, I want to check every corner and explore locations to the maximum. But the game quickly cools this ardor, abysses and invisible walls are everywhere. Fortunately, the falls do not kill the hero, but only remove some health from him. And you won't get lost, secrets are easy to find on a convenient three-dimensional map, and the correct direction of movement is constantly highlighted in green, so that you don't get confused about where to jump next. Caches contain both cute decorative items and soundtracks from old Daho games, as well as useful items like weapon and costume upgrades. Moreover, they are spread out quite generously, there is a great chance that you will find all the desired improvements long before the final. But, unlike the previous part, the game does not end after the end of the campaign. You can go back and investigate each of the levels, complete tasks to get the coolest upgrades and collect all the pieces of history. And, most likely, you will want to do it. After all, the plot in Eternal is presented in a completely different way than in Doom 2016. There, the hero missed Samuel Hayden's opening speech himself, unceremoniously breaking the monitor. And what was happening was easily described by two sentences, we turned hell into a power plant here, but something went wrong. You are already crumbling the devils for the fourth part, so your way out. Yes, there was a broad description of the backstory in the codex, but the game did not at all motivate me to go there. In Doom Eternal, off-screen monologues are devoted not only to hellish energy, but to the setting and the details of our hero's history. And the cutscenes are not too long, but numerous and bright enough to awaken interest in further study of the plot. After all, what is happening in the game itself is only a small part of the big picture, which can be compiled from numerous notes and pieces of information. In Eternal, the Doom universe left Hell, Mars and Earth and expanded into many worlds, in the history of which our hero left his mark. But he is laconic, so it is up to us to understand the local lore, surprisingly rich for such a game. But only if you wish, nothing prevents you from playing the old-fashioned way, skipping cutscenes and slashing demons for your pleasure. Since this review was written before the release, we have not yet been able to evaluate Doom Eternal's multiplayer. But even one story campaign deserves the highest praise in and of itself. It is twice as long as in Doom 2016, but does not have time to get bored, the mechanics are so rich here, the enemies and arenas are varied. But what is there after passing I want a supplement.